Hello, how are you? Shall we study Bible together? Uh, today, we're going to study from the book, of, continue study, uh, book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 1 to 13. The title is Sanctification, the Die to the Law. Now, um, before we do, shall we pray? Father in heaven, please teach us your word. Thank you. Jesus, and pray. Amen. All right. Well, um, as you recall from the uh, last uh, week, we learned that Paul explained that we Christian, we are, we are, we are, we, we die to the sin, which is we are not really uh, any longer. We are under the slavery of sin. Uh, we don't have to really be obedient to the sin anymore. Now, sanctification itself is a process of you to become like a sanctified, you to become a holy person with the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, really, today we're going to learn how to be a holy a person. And so, the Paul explained, uh, first of all, Paul, Paul explained we die to the sin. We don't have to be obedient to the sin anymore. Now, that sounds good. But if we stop right here, then it become a very big problem because there's a, one more other things we are, we die to, and uh, without understanding that the second things that we die to, I think we can really enjoy the Christian life. Uh, so uh, let me explain what we die to, and then the, uh, Paul clearly indicate that we die to the rule and our uh, law. I mean. Uh, let me read chapter 7, uh, verse 1. Do you not know, brother and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law has authority over someone only as long as the person lives. Now, Paul writing this letter to the uh, church in Rome, and that church is already like a mixture of a Gentile, and uh, many Jewish people. Uh, in early a church, in a first century church, it's really uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, many Jewish people, uh, uh, the uh, Jewish people who become a Christian. And so uh, there's a lots, lots, uh, you know, uh, previously, uh, well, lots of Jewish people, uh, with the Christian Jew, and plus uh, there's a lot, lots of Gentile. But, but then the Paul address here is that He's really talking to a brother and sister, particularly he's talking about to the people who know the law, which means he's really writing this to the mostly people who are really obedient to the law, which is Jewish people. And then the uh, Jewish people are very interesting uh, people. They, 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 well, Jewish religion itself, the Judaism itself is a very unique, I would say. Um, the, the basically, the Judaism is a, that you will obedient to God by keeping the law. And um, in the Old Testament alone, uh, they had like a 613 laws, but then the Jewish people add many, many other laws. Well, other laws is actually made by a, a man, man-made uh, rules and regulations. Now, why there are so many rules and regulations besides uh, a Torah, which is Old Testament? Because uh, for in, in order for you to keep one law, uh, there's a lot like a gray area, so that they have to kind of a kind of a confirm uh, what that meant. So they gonna add many many other. Uh, regulations and rules and so the Jewish people are saying you have to keep this regulation and the rules in order for you to be uh, you know obedient to God and um, um, I can give you some great example you know uh, uh, from the Bible that uh, what kind of a uh, law they they try to keep uh, let me read the act chapter 1 verse 12 then the apostle returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. Now, um, this particular uh, writing and uh, record of the uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 12, saying uh, that they're the disciple in Jesus, 
they went from the Mount Alip to the Jerusalem, but, the, but that was a Sabbath day. So they're saying, uh, you know, it was a distance, is a Sabbath day walk. Now, what is a Sabbath day walk? <laughs> well, what happened was a Sabbath day. Uh, is as you know is a day you supposed to rest you're not supposed to uh, work so uh, you know then, then you maybe maybe you woke up in the uh, that day in the Sabbath and in your bed and it's oh today's Sabbath great I don't have to work I just have to rest then you say oh but I gotta go bathroom so you went to bathroom and somebody say oh wait a minute you you went to bathroom you you walk like a ten steps. That's that's you you shouldn't do that. You you actually take a rest today. Yeah, but but I gotta go pee. I mean, then some people say, oh, I'm so thirsty. So they went they walked to the outside and the, they had a well and they started to drink the water. Oh, you cannot do that. You just walk like a twenty steps to the well. Uh, to the Sabbath, you're not supposed to do anything. You're supposed to rest. So, so the question is, how, how far you can walk on Sabbath day? So they ask maybe a rabbi or somebody say, oh, so how many how many steps we can walk? So, in the Jewish law, this is not in the Old Testament, but, but in the Jewish law, uh, with the rules and regulation, they will say, okay, you can walk up to. 2,000 steps on Sabbath day. <laughs> 2,000 steps is, uh, well, you know, people, the one step is about like a one yard. So 2,000 uh, steps is about like a one mile. And um, uh, for, for Jewish people, keeping that distance is very, very important. Maybe that's why that for disciples, that when Jesus decided to walk on Sabbath day back to the Jerusalem, they were like, oh, today's Sabbath day, we're not supposed to walk besides two, within 2,000 steps. So they probably count one, two, three, four. And then when they went back to the Jerusalem, they said, good, we didn't walk uh, more than 2,000 steps. <laughs> so maybe that's why they wrote down that, uh, you know, the distance was a Sabbath day walk. I think they tried to tell the audience and uh, that we didn't break the law. Um, I guess I guess for them that's important. I guess, uh, but for us it's a, such a uh, ridiculous. I mean, okay, today I can only walk two thousand steps. <laughs> but but that's that kind of uh, uh, well, that's a rule and regulations they try to keep. And so in a way that when Jesus came. Uh, when Jesus arrived in uh, uh, Jerusalem, he really tried to fight with this type of rules and regulations, that, like a mom made the rules and regulations that kind of enforce people to uh, uh, be obedient. Uh, in a, in a many parts of the New Testament, Jesus actually kind of, uh, kind of uh, have to uh, fight with people that uh, you know, in a in a, in a uh, you know the the uh, teaching of the Mount of Olives itself is like uh, you used to heard this, but the truth is this kind of Jesus actually really have to explain what is really Lord's all about. Um, you know, he was saying he didn't come to uh, abolish the law, but he come to fulfill the law. See, the law itself is a good thing. The law itself there's a reason. The Old Testament has uh, 613 uh, regulation. I mean, a law in the Torah. But see, uh, Jewish people thought uh, keeping the law is actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, be obedient to God. That's actually uh, you can go to heaven by that. And then, um, unfortunately, they're like a, uh, they 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 carry that tradition to their uh, Christian. A life um, now so the Paul tried to tell these Jewish people okay I'm particularly talking to people who understand about the law uh, but then uh, if you die you know the law doesn't apply to the person anymore the person dead so for Paul to explain to the new Christians and the church in the Rome he was really wanting to explain that that we are not really under the law anymore. We, we, we die to the law. 
just as we die to the sin, we don't have to be obedient to the sin, um, the law is the same, that we die to the law. Uh, now next verse, uh, verse 2 and 3, uh, he used pretty interesting example. He used like a marriage, uh, marriage uh, vow as example of the, uh, you know, about our relationship with the law. Let me read the verse 2 and 3. For example, by the law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But if her husband died, she is released from the law that binds her to him. So then, if she has sexual relations, relations with another man while her husband is still alive, she is called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law and is not an adulteress if she marries another man. So basically what the Paul was saying that, you know, uh, if the woman, you're, you're, basically, basically a law prohibit a uh, woman to divorce. But see, uh, but then if the husband die, the woman is free from that uh, a law. And then this woman can marry the other guy. See, now, when I'm really uh, talking about marriage issue, uh, I, I, I remember one thing that uh, there's, a, there's a couple of my church. Uh, there's always uh, some couple, uh, husband and wife, to be like a one unit. Maybe, maybe some of your friends are like that, I think. There's always somebody, they're so close, they're always like a one unit. The husband and wife is always there together. And this particular couple I know in my church, uh, they're like that. And then they're about my age. And then the husband one day came to me with a look, he, he looks so sad. And the husband said, Oh, Pastor Kenji, after we die in heaven, we don't marry anymore. We'll be separated. And I don't know what to say because he looks so sad. And so I, I said, ah, Well, yeah, but I think you and uh, your wife, probably you guys are very good, close friends still. I think so. I, I really don't know, but but he he looks so sad. That, you know, then then not gonna be married anymore after they die. But it, you know, I look at his wife. His wife like his big smile. <laughs> you know, <laughs> of course, the person who watching this video, uh, you are a very very good uh, Christian. Um, you know, uh, woman. You dear never thought about, oh, I wish my husband died, I will be free. No, I know you don't think such a thing. But in the, uh, Paul views this as an example of uh, uh, the Christians is no longer uh, under the law. We die to the law. We're, we're free. And, um, you know, uh, so, so, so once you die to the law, um, how you have to be bound to the law anymore. And let's move on to the uh, verse 4. So, my brothers and sisters, you also die to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruits for God. Now, next verse uh, is very, very important verse. I think, basically, what the Paul is saying is, we 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 die to the law, and we no longer under the control of the law. We don't belong to the law, but now we belong to Jesus. I mean, uh, as a church, as a Christian, uh, we are married to Jesus. You see, the Holy Spirit came in us. That's one thing particularly different the non-christian Christians see non-christian the Holy Spirit is not with them but Christian once you become a Christian the Jesus Spirit always with us and um, uh, we don't have to be obedient to the law anymore uh, what, what the Torah said but we should be obedient to Holy Spirit we should be obedient to Jesus what Jesus tells us 
And so, so basically what Paul said, we're married to Jesus and then the, the new dispensation starting here. Uh, now, the dispensation means that uh, there's a new relationship or the, uh, the uh, servanthood with uh, God has changed. Uh, the time of, Jew, uh, time of Old Testament, uh, yeah, the keeping the law is uh, God's command. But then after Jesus came in this church era, this time of a Gentile, uh, time of uh, Holy Spirit, some people say. This particular time of uh, our church age, that our really, uh, uh, you know, we have to be obedient to Holy Spirit and guidance and filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not keeping the law anymore. Uh, again, the law itself is not bad, but we are not ob uh, obligate to the keep the law. Uh, I can give you another Bible verse to uh, explain how ridiculous for us to keep the law. Uh, let me read Corinth, uh, 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 Colossians chapter 2, verse 20 to 23. Since you die with Christ to the eternal spirit forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit it to rules? Do, uh, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch these rules which have to do with things that are all uh, destined to perish with use are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an uh, appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their falsely hum humility, and their uh, harsh uh, uh, treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining the sensual uh, indulgence. Now that is a very interesting. The, uh, the Bible clearly says that we die to the law. So all the regulation, kind of a crazy regulation, do this, don't do this, don't do that. We really don't have to follow. We just have to follow Jesus. We have to follow the um, uh, Holy Spirit. Now, I know some people say, yeah, I understand Judaism, or Jewish people try to keep the Old Testament law, but we, we, we were, as a Christian or church, we don't do such a things. But in the church, sometimes do the very similar things. Some church said, oh, you cannot raise both hands during the worship. You cannot do this. That's a, that's a, that's, that's a, you, you're in the Pentecost. We're in a, Bible, a Baptist church. Uh, some church will say, well, I don't, I think how you praise God don't have any particular form. I don't think so. Um, the, some church will say, oh, you, the pastor, pastor have to wear the suits because when you do the worship service, you have to present yourself uh, with your best attire. Uh, but, 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 then, but the Bible doesn't really say you have to wear the suits. Uh, as far as I know, Jesus didn't wear the suits. Well, so Paul didn't wear the suits. I don't think so. Um, I, think, I think we have to be obedient to Holy Spirit. Some churches say that um, you must, exactly you must pay one-tenth of uh, uh, offering. Uh, if you don't, then you don't belong to membership of the church, and not only that, uh, you're a bad Christian. Yeah, Old Testament does say one-tenth, but that's a guidelines. Uh, you see, uh, uh, it's everything. You see, God himself doesn't need any penny. He actually created us. He's the one who gave us 100% wealth. Uh, he himself doesn't need our money, but he, it is like a guideline. He was saying that he's, he, he's actually, uh, I think what he's saying is uh, you can keep the most of the things he gave to you, like a nine, about 90%, but he was saying about 10%, you should consider to use that for his glory. And uh, so that is, I think, is the offering. Um, you know, but, but then some churches enforce exact offering the 10%. Um, now, all this, I think even church uh, makes kind of ruin regulation. Uh, again, I'm not saying the rules and regulation itself is not bad. There's a reason they made those rules and regulation, but you have to understand before that, we've got to be obedient to Holy Spirit. Uh, 
and um, um, you know, so it's a really a, a poll. The point is, we should, uh, you know, this become a different dispensations, a different uh, 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 relationship with different uh, uh, serving food that we have with God. Uh, this actually that we should be obedient to the Holy Spirit, that God will give us, guide us, that every single uh, process to be holy by the Holy Spirit is uh, uh, prophesied in the Old Testament, in the book of Ezekiel, uh, chapter 36, verse 26 to 27. Let me read that to you. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws see in the book of Ezekiel uh, it's prophesied eventually there will be a day that God's spirit will come to the a believer and that person will be guided by God so it's not like we will keep the Old Testament written law, but we will actually be obedient to God's word uh, by following the Holy Spirit. And thus we keep the God's law. And so this is a, uh, this era of the church time, uh, that is what the church should do. Uh, we're, we're married to Jesus and we have a different, uh, I would say dispensation, we have a different uh, relationship from the Old Testament. We have a um, relationship with God or fellowship with God different from the Old Testament time. And then uh, let me move to verse 5. Now verse 5 is a key verse for today's learning. For when we were in the realm of the flesh, the sinful passion arose by the law were at work in us so that we bore fruits of death. What? Now verse 5. Do you understand what the verse 5 is saying? Now this verse is a very, very, I would say, strange verse. Because it, first of all it said, uh, when we were in the realm of the flesh, means probably what Paul would say, that Paul is indicating that before we become a Christian, um, that, that, that the sinful passion arose by the law. So basically what the Paul is saying, the law makes you m more sinful? I mean, <laughs> and then because of that, we were bearing the fruits of the de a death. I mean, what, what, what the verse 5 is saying? I can give you one great example from the Bible. Uh, if you understand this, uh, you understand very much about what the Paul wanted to tell you about today's learning that we're we're free from the law. Um, now let me let me share with you uh, some story in the Old Testament, and if you understand this, I think you understand very well. Uh, do you remember the King David had the daughter, and her name is Tamar, and uh, she is so beautiful. She's so young. She's she's virgin, and uh, so. Tamar is uh, Dave's daughter, but then the Tamar had the half brother. Her, his name is Amnon, and this this idiot Amnon, he he he's a half brother, but he actually raped his sister. Uh, let me read Second Samuel chapter thirteen, verse one and two. In the course of time. Amnon, son of David, fell in love with Tamar, the beautiful sister of Absalom, son of David. Amnon became so obsessed with his sister Tamar that he made himself ill. She was a virgin, and it seems impossible for him to do anything to her. See, of course, the Tamar it's a sister, half sister of Amnon. So for, for Amnon, he knows he cannot marry to sister or he cannot do anything to her because she's just a, she's a sister. 
and then, but but the more she, he think about, you know, oh, she's so beautiful, she's a virgin. Oh no, I want her, I want her. Oh no, this idiot. I mean, this Amnon. He even become as uh, uh, ill by thinking about her or touching her. He he, he not supposed to even do any of that. But then that make them sick. See, the law prohibit. And the certain things, and the more the law prohibit, we wanted to break the law. And then eventually, what happened in this story is Amnon actually tricked uh, uh, her sister Tamar, and so the Tamar came to uh, Amnon's room. And then, as you imagine, Amnon tried to rape her. And then the Tamer, which is Tamer telling Amnon, No, you don't do that. You shouldn't do that. You're my sister, brother. You don't do that. Oh, no, don't touch me. Ah, no, don't do that. And then, of course, this happens. And then what happened? The verse uh, 14 and 15. But he refused to listen to her. And since he was stronger than her, as she, he raped her. Then Amnon hated her with intense hatred. In fact, he hated her more than he had loved her. Amnon said to her, Get up and get out! What kind of... He's... See, what happened is uh, Amnon, he knows the law prohibit him to... Actually, rape women self is prohibited. But he actually raped his sister. And maybe she's crying on the bed. You're, 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 you're my brother. I will tell the my dad. And then, as uh, Tamar crying, maybe in the bed, he said, "Ah, oh. he start to not like. Her. You get, you you get out, and then you you just get out. And he he just he said, oh man, this sister is so annoying. He's." Jerk, he's a more than jerk, he's, he's a scum. Uh, but see, what I think the Paul's point in the verse 5 is if there's a prohibit, the law prohibits certain things, we human have a tendency that we wanted to break the law, we feel good by breaking the law. See, this society we have, there's a tons of crime. And uh, you know, even 21st century, the many things being advanced, many things changed, but that crime is constantly there. It's even even such a horrible crime being done still. Um, why? Why? Why we don't have a perfect society? There's always some people do bad things like uh, raping or stealing, uh, murdering people. There's, there's a strong law, and there's a law enforcement people like a policeman everywhere. But then people know if you break the law, you have to pay the consequence. But then still, people do bad, evil things. And the basically what the Paul saying, that's who we are. See, when the Adam and Eve ate the fruits of uh, uh, knowledge of good and evil, we human knows the knowledge of good and knowledge of evil. We know both. We know what's supposed to be done and supposed to be good. We know what, what is good things, but we chose to evil. That, that is a really what the Adamic sin is all about. That is the foundation of the sin. So the rule telling up, you should keep the obey, obedient to the law, but more the law prohibit us to do things we wanted to break. Um, we really wanted to destroy the beautiful things. Um, you know, we, 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 were, we were just totally evil. The, 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 the Paul's point is, we are free from such a world. We, we, the, the law is no longer uh, under, uh, we are not under the law anymore, but we are under the Holy Spirit. See, if we wanted to be keeping law, like, like, like example, the church, Oh, that you are, you you become a Christian from now day. You shouldn't commit any sin. You gotta you gotta live holy life. 
And if you, if you don't do that, you might lose your salvation. You, you got, you gotta keep, uh, you can drink any alcohol from now. You can uh, see, uh, you can listen any rock music. You can, uh, uh, you can go to, uh, 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 dancing. No, 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 no. Oh, you got to wear the, uh, this kind of a clothes or this type of clothes. Um, you, you, you shouldn't wear the, any makeup, uh, because that's evil things. But eventually, People feel like to break that and they say, oh, I want to go dancing. I want to listen to nice uh, rock music. Someday uh, Christians say, all the good music belongs to the devil. Why Christians don't have a good rock music? And now we have lots of Christian rock singers. But the church has to be careful. We got to understand. The Bible clearly said you are free from the law. Or regulations and many regulation man-made regulation it's we don't have to follow but then we only have to follow the Holy Spirit uh, let me read verse 6 but now by dying to what once bound us we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code now that is a very very uh, uh, clear statement. Um, now we we are really dead to the law. Um, see, I I know I know the the church really try to make up a rules and regulation. Um, uh, you know, if if you have to keep the law, the Old Testament. Oh, for, for example, I know for example Jehovah Witness people. Uh, they will say, uh, you know, in, in the Old Testament. It said that you are not supposed to eat the meat with the blood in it uh, because the blood is a life and that's written in the Old Testament. From that, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Jehovah Witness people, they made, made up their human uh, rules. Say, oh, okay, the, you're not supposed to drink the blood, so you're not do any blood transfusion. And uh, they enforce that to their kids, so then many, many kids died with keeping the law but but if you keep the law i had to ask i had to ask people if the your jehovah witness why don't you keep other law such as killing the animal and paste the blood of the sheep into the altar you have to build the altar in your kingdom home hall and then you should worship god by what the old testament said how you're supposed to worship um, why don't you kill the animal? You don't sacrifice the animal anymore? I mean, but then why you keep the, another law? And one, one law that, uh, you know, you wanted to keep it, but other law you don't keep? That doesn't compute. Uh, see, the people, by keeping the law, it's eventually we're going to break the law. And uh, Paul saying is, uh, that's not what the Christian life we're free from the law. See, our law is from the uh, following the uh, Holy Spirit. Um, and then uh, the verse seven say this: What shall we say then? Is a law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not have known the sin was had it not been for the law. For I would not have known that. Coveting uh, really was if the law had not said you shall not covet. Uh, so the verse 7 clearly saying the law itself is not bad. God gave us many law and uh, all the Ten Commandments is really what God really telling us what the God's law is. We got to understand that what clearly what God's mean in the law. And then bottom line is his main law is love because he is his main uh, personality. The God's personality is loving God. Uh, he's, he's God of just and he's also God of love. And um, so for anything we do, we got to do with uh, God's law, God's love, uh, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, for example, at the church, the why most of a church when we do the events we don't drink alcohol I mean as you're a Christian you can drink alcohol uh, but then you have to control it 
And then at the church, most of the church won't usually don't do, drink alcohol because we don't want to offend the weaker brother and sister. Um, this for love. Um, it's it's not like a regulation. You it, it, you don't you don't have to do. You you cannot do this. You cannot. Do, um, you know, if, even the sexual desire, the sexual desire itself is not bad. God made us uh, that way. And then if you really wanted to control, or if you really wanted to marry it, itself is not bad at all. Um, but then you have to control the sexual desire. Um, or, or this is same as uh, uh, eating appetites. Uh, the eating appetites, like uh, you have an appetite to eat, itself is not bad. But if you just keep eating, oh, oh, I want it, I want it, eventually you become obese, and uh, you, if you go too much, you become sick. Um, you know, you become like a diabetes and then shorten your life. Um, so what I'm saying is that, um, you know, the law is really there and the it, law itself is not bad. But see, bottom line is we have to be obedient to the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit is orderly. So we don't eat too much or we, we have to eat. Uh, sexual desire, we have to control it. Um, everything we do, we do with love. Uh, there's no regulation that you cannot eat this, you cannot eat this, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. All that we're free. But then, we got to follow the Holy Spirit. Uh, then, let me read verse 8. But sin says the opportunity afforded by the commandment produced in me every kind of a covering. For apart from the law, Seeing was dead. Um, and let's move on to verse 9 and 11. Once I was alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin uprang uh, uh, to life and I died. I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. For sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, uh, deceive me and through the commandment put me to death. See, if we really try to keep the commandment, if we try to keep the rule, eventually we're going to break it. And then while we break it, we feel like a guilty and going to ask forgiveness. Uh, but see, the bottom line is we have to understand that this law and regulation, something used to bound people, is not there anymore. We have to simply follow the guidance of Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit actually will give, let you to be a more holier. See, the process of sanctification, the very important process is for us to understand the first we are dead to the sin. We are no longer slave to sin and then we are, we are dead to the law. So it is, we, are, we are not bound to the law anymore, but we are married to Jesus. So the process of Holy uh, uh, sanctification, the very important part is for us Christians to follow the Holy Spirit. Uh, let me read verse 12. So then, the law is holy, and commandment is holy, righteous and good. See, law itself is not bad, again. But see, we got to follow the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then, let me read verse 13. Did that which is good then become death to me? By no means. Nevertheless, in order that sin might be recognized as sin, he used uh, what is good to bring about me uh, about uh, my death, so that through the commandment, sin might become utterly sinful. Uh, see, the, today's learning uh, we learned from until the verse thirteen. Uh, see, we human have a tendency to really break the law, and the law itself is not bad. But if you try to keep the law, now you become a legalistic. And then uh, you start judging others, say, oh, that person, uh, you know, raising hand in the church, oh, she's too much, uh, she's doing this, I mean, <laughs> and then we start to kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, judging others, and not only that, uh, we just keep kind of uh, saying that person is sinful, uh, and so on and so on, uh, and then usually we cannot keep the law because uh, um, you know we have a tendency to break the law 
this all this is nonsense because there's a no law to begin with no regulation no law law and regulation itself is not bad maybe but there's a reason to be there but um you know the, the 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 fundamental most important law is to follow the holy spirit and there's a love uh the, the, if there's no love in a church um that's not really kind of a church i i pretty much jesus wants uh, the all the brothers and sisters we should love each other and that's only law we need um basically uh the the, the we just have to follow the Holy Spirit and then as we love each other and the brothers and sisters at the church and then the, all the Christians we have a full freedom and the full of joy and uh, as the Bible said we, we have to be we can be joyful all the time because we have a total freedom from sin and the rule and regulation we we're, we're now obedient to become a servant of God and we serve the Holy Spirit Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for today's message and thank you that you're always with us and guiding us. Lord, thank you, Jesus, and pray. Amen. All right, you take care. Have a nice day. Bye bye.